Well, you may not have heard about this, since apparently it's not a big news story somehow, but UFOs turn out to be real. We're not kidding. Recently, the New York Times profiled a secret $22 million Pentagon program that investigated unidentified flying objects. Doesn't mean they're from outer space, but they're not identified, and they're flying, and they're objects. The program wasn't bogus. Investigators found multiple aircraft encounters they could not explain, and they've even been storing metal alloy recovered from the vicinity of these encounters. Leslie Kane wrote about this in the New York Times, that piece in question, and she also wrote a book called UFO Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record. She spent years investigating UFOs with the support of former Bill Clinton Chief of Staff, by the way, John Podesta. Leslie Kane joins us tonight. Leslie, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So that piece, I think, vindicated uh, a lot of work that you've been doing for an awfully long time and certainly got my attention, and I've stopped making fun of people like you and started started paying attention. This seems like a huge story. So I, I know that it's it's vast and hard to sum up, but if you could just briskly tell us what we think we know about these sightings. Well, we do know that there are objects in the sky and sometimes in the water that demonstrate extraordinary capabilities that we but that experts say we don't have on this planet. We don't have the capability of, of creating the kind of technology that or apparent technology that's been observed by high-level officials for many, many decades. The Pentagon program is the most recent discovery, but these things have been studied in other countries and by our country for many years. So what percentage of these sightings are we sure are not weather phenomena or experimental aircraft? Well, that's a really good question, because most sightings of UFOs that, that just people report are not, are, are identifiable. I mean, we're talking yes. about a very, maybe five to 10% of all the sightings that are called in are are not explainable. And what the ones that are really of interest are the ones reported by military pilots, by commercial pilots, by trained observers, multiple witnesses, ones that are caught on radar, events that have a lot of data to support them and involve very, very credible people. So I, I guess what bothers me most about this story is how clearly people who should have been following up and paying attention haven't been. And the, the case that sticks with me, November 7th, I think, 2006, at Chicago Air, Air, Ho, Hare Airport, 4.15 in the afternoon, gate C-25, I believe, the pilot of the plane waiting to depart to Charlotte looks up and there is a saucer hovering not that far over the plane. People in the tower see it, other pilots see it, dozens of people see it. It's real, and the FAA refuses to investigate. How could that be? I know. It's shocking. It's absolutely shocking to me. I mean, they, they refuse to investigate, I think, because they... I mean, who knows what the bigger... The bigger reason probably is that it's very... They can't explain these things, and they just want... You know, they don't want to deal with them. It might frighten people. They don't have enough information. They don't like to say, well, there's something hovering above an airport, but we don't know what it was. So basically, they will come up with other explanations for it, such as that it was a weather phenomenon. That's what the FAA said about O'Hare, which is really an insult to the pilots who witnessed this thing and many other observers who know that it wasn't weather. I mean, it was a metallic-looking disc-shaped object that hovered over the, as you said, hovered over a terminal, gate C-17 for about five minutes, and then it shot straight up through the clouds. This was an incredible aspect of the thing. It was hovering below a cloud bank, and all of a sudden it just shot straight up really fast through the cloud bank and cut a hole in it. So there was like a cookie cutter clean hole in the clouds. You could look up and see the blue on the other side. And you know, as far as anybody knows, as far as I know, and from what I've been told, we don't have uh, machines in the sky that can do things like but, that. But I mean, this is not a potato field in Maine in the 1950s at three in the morning. This is Chicago right. O'Hare, one of the biggest, busiest airports in the world in the middle of the day in front of sober witnesses, including pilots and the control tower. And the FAA says, we're not that interested. Like, how could that be? Yeah, I know. I mean, I, it's, it's very bad. I appreciate how baffled you are, Tucker, because I'm I baffled am. too. And you can imagine that the uh, witnesses involved with this, you know, it's an insult to them. I mean, there are many witnesses, and we're talking about military people, you know, high-level people in the Air Force, the Navy, the uh, other military commercial pilots who were just told that they we're not interested in what they saw. And it's very difficult for a lot of them because they're patriotic people. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean what if it's the Chinese military? I mean, I, I, I believe you because you are, I think, the preeminent researcher on this question, but it beggars belief that the U.S. government would just sort of let it go. Uh, anyway, I appreciate it. Leslie, thank you for coming on. It's an honor to have you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. I appreciate your interest in this. Thank you. Thanks a million.